Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we are reviewing MacGyver the Escape Room Game. Now, we will not be doing a tutorial for this because this, uh, this is a puzzle-based escape room type game and any kind of tutorial would include spoilers for at least one of the puzzles and we don't want to spoil it for you. Um, so now this is a game that is listed as for one to four players ages 12 and up and is um, was published by Pressman and Goliath Games. Now Pressman is just listed there on the cover. And I'd like to take a moment to thank Ali Lloyd from Pressman and Goliath Games who sent this game to us to do some content with. So let's start with the number of players in the age um, recommendation. So in the one to four, now games like this, um, as our friend Dave pointed out, that there's a bit of an interesting thing with the number of players in an escape room game because most of these games you're doing one puzzle at a time, mm -hmm. which means one person's working on the puzzle while the other people are coming up with ideas and maybe brainstorming. But at any given time, there's only one actual person working on the puzzle, which means the more people you have, the less people that are actually physically doing mm -hmm. something. But on the other hand, the fewer people you have, the less variety and skill sets you have. And there's a wide variety of skill sets needed for the different puzzle in this. So my opinion, and, and it's changed over the course of doing these, but my opinion is the best number of people for this is three people with the caveat that they have a variety of skill sets. So each one of them is going to get a chance to, to work on different puzzles. What are your thoughts on the, on the optimal play, player count? Um, yeah, I would say two to, two to three. Two to three. So I'm I'm at three. You're 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 a little over. You're at like two point five then, mm -hmm. basically. All right. Now, what about the the twelve and up? What do you think about that as an age recommendation for this game? I think that's fine. You think that's a good recommendation? Yeah. You think twelve is a good amount? I think so. I might even go a little higher on this. Um, twelve isn't bad if, I mean, if they're if pretty. I mean, if you have three twelve year olds, maybe they'll they might be able to figure something out. But I mean, like. You do need some people that are a little more, like, unless they're 12, an advanced 12-year-old. A 12-year-old 12 12 with their parents, that's fine. Oh, yeah, well, that's fine. Of course, yeah, one uh, one of the people being a 12-year-old, yes. But, um, so we've played all five of the missions in this box. This game actually comes with five, comp uh, five different scenarios that are interlinked. You do have to play them in order because there are some items you get... In some of the scenarios that you then use again, mm -hmm. for instance, there's a not a ruining, yeah, not ruining anything, but there's a there's a mirror in the first scenario. Uh, they call them missions in this. There's a mirror in the first mission that then gets used a couple times again mm -hmm. later, as an example, and it is five complete missions, each one probably lasting you between half an hour to an hour. We found. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose if it took you longer on some of the puzzles, that could be an issue. And another thing we're going to have to talk about while we're talking about this game is this game requires the use of a website, mm -hmm. sort of like an app, to play the game. So, all right, so should we talk about the the interesting use of the electronic medium first, or do you think we should discuss the various scenarios first? What do you think? Um, let's talk about the website. The website? All right, go ahead. Um, well, on the website... You, the first thing you do is you pick one of the missions, mm. and then it asks you to choose a difficulty. And there's easy, medium, and hard. Easy is not timed. Medium seems to always be around 75 minutes, and mm. hard seems to be 45 minutes. Yes. Um, now, I, one thing I, I, I want to note here real mm -hmm. quick is we found we started out using a phone to do the website. But it's not really optimal to use a phone. We wound up preferring using a laptop because the larger screen space is easier to see things, especially to get to the hint button, which I'm sure you're getting to next. Oh yeah, there's <clears> um <throat> the you get instructions in the envelopes for the missions, but there's additional instructions on the website. So mm. you have to, you know, click through, say like it'll tell you the website will say like open the red envelope and you open the red envelope and read that and then you have to click next and it'll give you instructions on what to do with the items in the red envelope yes and there are there are hints on the website 
And what, what we didn't realize was that some of the puzzles, you can also just click to get the solution after you've gone through enough hints, but that the solution button was disappearing on my phone. That's why we used the... It wouldn't properly load and scroll up. So that's why we switched over to using the laptop. Now, the, the hints and the solutions, the solutions, I think, are not available on the final puzzle in each of the chapters. Mm -hmm. Each of the missions, I should say. So, but the hints, you can get up to two hints on each one. And it, the hints can be very helpful. They don't deduct points for using the hints. The hints can be very helpful if it's a rather tricky puzzle where even the instructions aren't fully given to you, where they're just tricksy instructions. Because sometimes you're like, okay, I think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, but let's check the hint because maybe it'll tell us if we're on the right track. And I really appreciate those being there for that purpose because there were a handful of tricksy puzzles where we weren't even sure we understood yeah, the instructions the, correctly. The, the the further on you go in the missions, mm. the less instructions you get. Yes. Where it gets to the point where they don't even really tell you what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, you're you kind of like, You just need to um... kind of figure out what to do and then, and yes. then do it. And then, so it, it's almost like figuring out the instructions is part of the yeah. puzzle as it goes. So, yeah. the All right. So the first mission we shot through uh, the fastest mm -hmm. of any of them. We played it with three people and we, and we had a nice... Uh, diverse group of skill sets so that there were there were ones where you were working on there was ones I was working on there were ones Dave was working on we would pass them back and forth and we were able to get through it and we all had a good time and we really enjoyed all the puzzles so the second mission I would say we enjoyed we really enjoyed all but one of the puzzles there was one puzzle in the beginning of the second mission this is a minor criticism and again this will be spoiler free i'm not going to tell you how any and, of this was yeah, solved yeah and it's just like i mean because all the puzzles are different because we didn't like it cuz we sucked at it my, yeah my, not, someone like, else someone else might be like oh that's easy those are the puzzles i like which, which you know? it, yeah because this this contains five complete scenarios there's a ridiculous amount of variety of puzzles they don't just put the same type of puzzles in every scenario everyone is totally different there was maybe two puzzles i think that were the same kind the mirror ones yeah and that was like it everything else was unique yeah. a lot of unique puzzles in here so but th this particular puzzle i had some issues with it it was a physical puzzle and it required you manipulating items in a paper backing and you had to be very careful not to rip the paper but doing it even the way you should do it and we checked through the hints we ripped the paper a little bit and I kind of, that my one criticism there is I wished that instead of paper had been made of vinyl or something a bit more durable, mm -hmm. but that of course could up the cost of the game. And I mean, this is being sold for $30. Mm -hmm. So they've kept, I mean, for five missions at 30 bucks, they've kept the cost down. And overall, I would say other than that one puzzle, we enjoyed a lot of the other puzzles in mission two. Mm -hmm. Again, mission three, we loved. Like, we played Mission 3. That was another one where, like, every puzzle just clicked with us. We were really, really enjoying it. Mission 4 got a bit harder. And there was one puzzle in particular. It was the final. Like, most of Mission 4 was really good. Like, it was harder, but it was good. There were some interesting card puzzles and different things. And we, and we were going back and forth, and we were really liking it. And the final puzzle was really difficult. And the, this is another minor gripe I had with the final puzzle of Mission 4 was that when you thought you had it, you had to cut the item you were working with. And if you didn't have it, it that was done and you couldn't solve it. Mm -hmm. And we messed up that puzzle. And that upset me a little bit. But it wasn't that big a deal. We just moved on to Mission 5 and we kept going. So there were a few puzzles throughout the missions. And Mission 5, there were a couple puzzles I was not a big fan of. But I think that was more the style of the puzzle. I mean, they weren't, they weren't anything like my complaints yeah. with the other two. They were just ones where it's like, it wasn't my type of well, puzzle and it yeah, wasn't really were, your type of puzzle. There were, I mean, there were puzzles that had to do with math where I just stepped aside. Yeah, I, I took those. Or, I, or Dave, well, Dave took yeah. them in the first one and then I took I, them in some later ones because there was one I'm, you were like lost. I am completely, you were just saying, you were trying to explain it to me and I'm like, don't explain it. I'm not going to understand it. Just tell me what to input on the website. <laughs> yes. So, and that's the other thing was, so the, the website was very useful in that. So it would tell you, okay, so here's some of the instructions. There's some more of the instructions on the actual envelope. Um, work on the puzzle. When you're done, it's going to give you a word. Input the word in the website. You put the word in the website. It says, congratulations, you've succeeded. Here's what you have to do next. Or you've, You've got the wrong word. Mm -hmm. We deduct 
It deducts like a minute. Even mm. if you do easy and you're not being timed, it still has one minute has been deducted. But I mean, even with all the the wrong things that we inputted, mm. we never ran out of time no. when we did do the timed ones. No, we did. We did okay. We we didn't run out of time. And so, all right, the the the, the hints which were very helpful in keeping us from running out of time on some of them because there were some where we were stuck for a while and then we mm -hmm. took hints. The hints were very helpful. And I appreciated that, and I appreciated that they didn't penalize you for taking the hints because I thought that was that was really nice. It allowed, you know, if there were some puzzles that you just didn't have the skill set for, sometimes in your group of players, you could be like, "Look, we just don't understand how to do this. Let's get some hints, and maybe it'll help us along." Mm -hmm. And that was good. Most of the puzzles we really really liked. There were a couple we didn't, but I think a lot of that was personal mm -hmm. preference. It wasn't. I mean. Overall, my, 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 we finished playing this yesterday, and I slept on it, and I really feel like all but the one where I complained about the quality of the puzzle, every other one was just a personal preference issue. It was yeah. just like, well, that's not my kind of puzzle, but there's lots of puzzles in here, and there were lots that I really liked. I mean, you saw, there were a few where I was getting, like, super excited, because I mm -hmm. got, I'm like, oh, I got it, I got it, and I'm, and I slammed out the puzzle. Um, you too. There were some where you were like, oh, no, no, I got this. You're like, step aside. I got this. And you mm -hmm. just jumped in and we're, and we're doing your thing. Uh, like those maze ones. You were really good with the maze ones and the tetris well, shaped ones. No, not really the maze, just following well, the, yeah. the line. I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. I would I would call that a maze puzzle okay. though. Because again, no, we're not, we're doing this totally spoiler free. Uh, the, the timing, I think you should definitely do this with the timing. Even if you do it on, on the only medium difficulty where you have plenty of time because having the clock ticking and then when you in, you input an incorrect answer and it reduces your time it gives you this sense of urgency mm -hmm. that really i mean it just really keeps you moving and um i think you don't have that because we, we tried one time without the timer and i think you don't have that without the timer i like it with at least the timer even in the medium difficulty we have amazing amounts of time that you're not going to need it just makes you feel like oh gotta keep going gotta mm -hmm. keep going so i really i really liked the electronic medium in this i thought it was a, a very useful way to do it especially since it would have been hard to do it without it with inputting the word and seeing if yeah. you're correct because otherwise it would have been like oh reveal it were we correct no we weren't and here's the correct answer whereas with this you can keep going yeah. and keep trying because you just keep inputting it also the um the hints were great. The timer was great. So overall, I, I very much enjoyed this. And I just want to talk a little bit about the fact that if, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s like we did, <laughs> when MacGyver was a thing, um, when Richard Dean Anderson was on your television every week figuring out... With his awesome mullet. And, <laughs> hey, he had great hair, okay? And he was figuring out these amazing things. like Because the Escape Room game theme is so thematic for MacGyver because I mean I remember the most you know he would use the most unbelievable items mm -hmm. to solve problems not joking there was an episode I saw where he fixed a cracked car radiator with egg whites <laughs> that was a thing he poured the egg whites into the radiator the heat from the radiator cooked the egg whites and made a temporary patch and they were able to use the car to get to go where they needed to go <laughs> That was the kind of stuff that used to happen in MacGyver. I mean, it was so ingrained in the zeitgeist, in the pop culture subconscious, that that the word MacGyvering something as a slang term came to mean the same thing as jury rigging. It basically mm -hmm. replaced jury rigging for coming up with like a, a impromptu way to solve a problem and, and fix something and, you know, with chewing gum and duct tape and mm -hmm. a, a ballpoint pen or something. So this also hits like a huge, in addition to this being a fun game, this hits the nostalgia button for me because I remember watching the show as a kid and I mean, are you, uh, did it, did it do the same for you seeing all the pictures of MacGyver um, and the funny MacGyver type scenarios? Yeah, and the we, I mean, I watched MacGyver, but I mean, it wasn't hitting the nostalgia button for you. No, not no. really. So for me it was, so we have a little bit of, so I, I kind of thought it did. I thought the scenarios really sounded like episodes from the show. Which, which hit the nostalgia button for me. And Maybe because I remember watching it, but I don't really remember like specific episodes. Well, your memory for those things isn't as good as mine, so that, that just makes sense yeah. in general. But for me, and if you were a fan of MacGyver back in the day, this will hit the nostalgia button for you if you remember what the show was about and what the episodes were like. 
So, all right, all that being said, we've talked about the game, we've talked about the theme and how thematic this game is, and it is <clears throat> amazingly thematic. Where are you at with this? How many stars? Uh, I would say seven. So now, seven is a good score, and... And, I mean, that's only because, I mean, you, you can't replay it. You know, it, But you do get good value, because you get five missions... Oh, yes. For... We, Thirty dollars, where and, the other ones are like one mission for fifteen. Yeah, we were discussing this last night. We were talking about because now we got this copy for free, but I said, "Wait a minute, how much are they selling this for?" And Linda looked it up, and she says thirty dollars. I said, "How much are they selling um, Exit and um, Unlock? Unlock for each of the Exit and Unlock games are sold for fifteen dollars a piece, and that's one module, one adventure." So two of those is equal in price to this, and that's two adventures. This gives you five. That's a way better value just for your for your dollar. And you know what? I mean, money doesn't grow on trees. All of us have a limited amount of money we're going to spend on things. So th this is actually a lot of value in a small box. So that that goes into my rating as well, mm -hmm. which is also a big part of why I'm going to give this a seven. Now, I have not been big with a lot of the escape room games. I don't usually like the one and done. But five and done feels far more substantial to me. Mm -hmm. Five and done, it's like, it's it feels like, you know what, because there are plenty of games where five plays is all I play of it, and then it might sit on a shelf or get sold. So five plays of this felt like plenty. <clears throat> well, yeah, and also, I mean, like, we played all of the missions over three in three days three mm. separate days they weren't like back to back i don't believe yeah so we played a couple um, missions on two different days we played two missions at the yeah time. um but i mean if you have just like a weekly game night this is over a month worth of of games of games oh yeah game night you know and I it's mean, short enough that you could play other games yeah. on those game nights also you play one of this you play something else yeah, so all, all in all, I'm in 100% agreement with you. I'm also going to give this 7 out of 10 stars. I really, really like it. If you're a fan of escape room games and uh, also 80s goodness. Are, are a fan <laughs> of 80s goodness and are a fan of the MacGyver theme, I do recommend MacGyver, the escape room game to you. So there you have it. That is uh, everything we have to talk about in regard to MacGyver, the escape room game. We thoroughly enjoyed it. I would say we... Uh, Far more of the puzzles we enjoyed than didn't. And like I said, some of the ones we didn't were really personal preference. Mm -hmm. We do recommend you have uh, a group set with with uh, a variety of skill sets. People who are good at different things to, to take up each other's weaknesses. Like when uh, I did the math problems that mm -hmm. you didn't want anything to do with. <laughs> that is very useful in this game. But I do recommend this game to you. And they're selling it for $30 over at Target. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, either on the MacGyver, the Escape Room game, or on this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelt with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.